Hey everyone, Speedy here, and we have a Binding Blade banner that we are going to be pulling on today. Some of these units are fan favorites in my opinion, so I think it's a pretty good one. I'm going to be doing a unit overview for these characters, so if you want to skip it, please click ahead to the time shown on screen here, or if you're on a computer, you can click on the timestamp in the description below. Sorry, mobile users. Lou is an infantry green tome who is naturally kitted to be an anti-mage. He excels with a good speed, res, and attack stat, and his base HP isn't that bad either. His defense is pretty poor, but there are a ton of green infantry tomes who share this weakness, so it's nothing out of the ordinary. Lou comes with the Grand Serpent Tome Plus, which is exciting because I've wanted the rest of the Serpent Tomes to be added for a while now. This tome along with Mirror's Stance will work very well during the enemy phase, so if you're looking for a counter to those pesky Reinhardts and Aether Raids, you can put them to good use. Rally Up Res Plus is a premium assist right now, and it's extremely useful, and in conjunction with Attack Feint, Lou is pretty much there to help the team brace for impact against mages. Grand Serpent being refinable means that you can round out some stat points of his, so overall, while Lou isn't meta-defining, he's a solid unit with a base kit that was designed with intent. Next is Thea. Overall, her stat line is really balanced, and at high merges, I can see her being amazing. Stat-wise, she's really similar to Katria, just having higher defense and res and a little less HP. The lack of a PRF weapon really hurts her potential to be a top contender, but the word solid definitely comes to mind when speaking of Thea. Her Lance the Vanguard Plus is extremely useful, and it's great that it's being added to the summoning pool. This with steady posture naturally pushes her to be a physical tank, but I think you may want to balance her out and invest in some resistance skills just so she can cover more matchups. Seal Speed Defense is a new addition to the game, but the Seal skills have fallen out of the meta. I would say B skills are the most competitive skill slot, so I don't see the skill staying on many kits. I can see a future for Thea as a pesky, bulky flyer that people will have to deal with, but otherwise she doesn't bring anything that jaw-dropping to the table. Her art is really great though. Third we have Sue. The third bow cav being added to heroes, and she's one of the green bow variety as well. It's really easy to want to compare her to Bravelin, and she shares the same BST with her anyway. Sue has a higher base speed, defense, and HP, while Bravelin boasts one more attack than Sue and eight more res than her as well. Sue comes with the Short Bow Plus, which is the Wo Dao version for the bow weapon line. Swift Sparrow and Chill Defense are still fairly high tier skills, and Hone Speed 4, while being self-explanatory, is an amazing C skill. Sue is kitted to be a huge player phase range threat, and while she's sadly lacking a PRF like two of the other units on this banner, she will still serve her role extremely well. Being green might be a downside as compared to being colorless because she will be losing out on a ton of red matchups, but on the flip side, she can have an edge over Lin in blue matchups, and I think having a colored bow gives you an incentive to use Sue on certain maps over Lin. And finally we have Idun, who I want to say is the strongest unit on this banner. She's an armored red dragon, so while her stats are insanely high like the others that share this typing, she suffers from having two weaknesses. Her stat line is extremely similar to Winter Fey's, which I think is done on purpose and I also find it pretty cute. So while Fey excels in res, Idun excels with defense. Demonic Breath grants plus 3 defense and is effective against other armor units, which is one of my favorite effects in the game. Secondly, if Idun has a negative status effect at the start of combat, or if she isn't full health, she removes any negative status effects or debuffs and grants plus 4 to all of her stats. And of course, she gets the standard adaptive damage as well on Dragonstone, so overall this weapon is amazing. Fortress Defense Res 3 is an awesome tier 4 A slot, and it's going to turn Idun into a great sponge. Ventral Fighter naturally works on slower tanks like herself, and while Ward Dragons isn't the best C skill in my opinion, it's a must have if you're planning to run a mixed movement dragon comp. With a PRF that neutralizes debuffs and some premium base skills, Idun is an extremely strong addition to add to your barracks. Alright, so I'm only going in 150 orbs for this banner. Well, 155 I guess, technically. I do have the summoning tickets for this one, so hopefully that offsets the amount of pulls. I think mainly I want Idun the most. Or Sue. Wow, uh, okay, starting right off the bat with a lean. Uh, someone made a comment on one of the other videos, like, Legend has it if you plus 10 lean Phoenix Master 1 will steal your account. So I think I'm getting pretty close to that. <laughs> Very nice. So she's plus defense minus speed. Great. I will be merging her most likely because mine is plus 5 I think at this point. Alright anyway so as I was saying um, I'm mostly going to be going for Idun and Sue I think. 
I never really liked Lou that much, I'm gonna be honest. I know there's a ton of rabid Lou fans out there. Whenever I play Binding Blade, I usually go for Lilina over Lou, just because I think she's cute. So I never really got attached to him. And then uh, there's Thea. I, I gotta get used to calling her Thea, I'm so used to calling her Tate. But that, that came as quite a shock, in my opinion. Obviously, I don't- well not obviously, but if you know me, I really wanted Percival on this banner. So I'm not gonna say I'm disappointed, because I think these are pretty good picks. But I was kind of taken aback that Thea got a spot. Like if they were gonna put one of the uh, Ilya Pegasus sisters, I would want Juno over her. I think Juno has a, Juno has a more interesting design. Ah, screw it. Let's just try our luck here. I don't want to say that someone's going to get demoted, because I got basically shut up last- Wow, okay. <laughs> we got Thea. This luck, wow. Alright, so we're done with blues, I think. We got plus HP, minus attack. Not the best IV set, but if she does get a demote, I was about to say, if there is a, a likely candidate on this banner for a demote, it's going to be her, in my opinion. So I could always fix that up. Um, what was I going to say? Her kit. People say this isn't a good kit, like it's definitely demote fodder, but there's some pretty good stuff here. Steady posture. I know we have that on Racing, but still. And this Vanguard Plus is also really great. So we'll have to see with time. I don't want to just claim, oh yeah, that, that character's going to get demoted, because obviously I'm here, Valoria Liss. <laughs> well, not Liss, because I pulled her, but you know what I mean. Good circle here. I was really banking on Valoria getting demoted, so I'm kind of bummed out that they didn't even demote any characters. You know, looking back though, I could kind of understand it, because their PRF weapons are pretty stacked. Like, I know Ares got demoted. Like, what? It was around this time last year, maybe April? And Ares PRF was pretty busted. I thought Lean was getting demoted on that original banner, because I was like, there's no way they're gonna put Dark Mistletane in the 4-star pool. So that's a pretty good precedent to point to. However, Valoria and Caden, the two likely candidates from last banner, I just... They, their weapons are so overloaded, in my opinion. Like, more so than Dark Mistletane. I was expecting a demote because Racing getting demoted kind of gave me hope, but I kind of understand the decision. Just hoping it doesn't become the new trend, <laughs> because if there's anything this game has a problem with, it's overloading the 5-star exclusive pool. And a Marth. People have been really upset with Fire Emblem Heroes, I think, lately. Or maybe they're just like a vocal portion of the community. But it's upsetting to see so much negativity. But like, I, I understand their anger. Like what? That people were complaining we're getting less monthly orbs, which I'm still not sure if is necessary if it's necessarily true, because I feel like we got two Tempest trials last month, so I want to see like an official orb count before I start crying about that. But even if it is true, yeah, it's it's pretty upsetting, the lack of demotes. Uh, arena, what's it called? Ether raids, being kind of whale friendly, I guess, because of the anima blessings. I don't know, I think like a, a combination of a bunch of decisions that they've made lately has made people get kind of restless. But I'm gonna say this to you, if you are one of those people who are very upset with what IS has been doing, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Whoops. If you've been one of those people who's been very upset, just take a break from the game. Do what's best for you, you know? If this game is making you 
it's making your day worse. Just don't play it. Like, And I know people say they get upset because they love the game so much that they want it to be better. And I agree with that sentiment. But I think if, if you're getting that upset about it, it's best to just take a step back. You're not missing out on much, on much, it's not going anywhere. And if you really care that much, you could just log in for daily orbs. Obviously, I don't want people to quit the game, because uh, I have a channel about Fire Emblem Heroes, pretty much. But I went to Reddit, and it was just like, holy crap, these people are so angry. <laughs> just, just take a step back. And who knows, you might, like, appreciate the decision to step back as well. You might feel better. Feel more positive in life. I don't mean to get all preachy, I'm just- that's- that's the advice I would give to people who seem so upset. I just read, like... Well, they had, like, mega salt threads on Reddit, and then I was reading the, oh, there's no demote on this banner, I read a thread this morning, and it was just, like, 200 comments of people being so angry. <laughs> Come on, Eden. I know I got a lot already, but I would love to get her. Stall. But with Valoria out of the four-star pool now, I guess I need to pick a five-star project. I mean, a, not a five-star, but a plus ten project to focus on. So I really wanted to, to work on Obero. What the hell? <laughs> I'm not upset. That what the hell was not out of upsetness, but that's just random. That's the second brave Ephraim I've gotten off focus like that. That's sick. So special fodder, uh, special fighter fodder, minus attack plus res. Now I won't feel bad if I fodder him off. Hey, maybe Edun could use it. I don't know. I gotta find an armor I really like using and merge them up. Let's back out. Or maybe we had a pity rate. It's only four orbs. Uh, yeah, let's just do it. Maybe the colorless too. Maybe I'll get a lucky Valoria. Or not. But before I was interrupted, I was talking about plus 10 projects. I'm torn between Obero, who I really want to focus on, Raisin, which I haven't pulled a good IV copy yet, but I think he'd be pretty cool at plus 10 with G Dual Flyer for Arena. And I, I like Raisin a lot as a character. And Niles. And I'm kind of thinking about Klein now, because his new refine actually looks great. With the minus two speed penalty. And chill defense is always welcome. I think that's a really good refine. Just, it's hard for me to want to focus on Klein because I do have a really good Brave Bow Archer already in my Bride Cordelia. Wow, okay. Please, Edun. It's probably not going to happen, but I've, I've gotten so lucky already. <laughs> Speaking of Edun, um, I'm kind of shocked to find out that she's such a fan favorite. I liked her, obviously. So I guess it's not that shocking, but... I didn't even know Binding Blade had a secret ending until like seven years after I beat it. So I didn't really get to see much of what made her great. So I guess when people say she's a fan favorite, most people got that secret ending. I had to look up how to get it. I don't remember if it's super cryptic, cryptic but basically you need to collect all the legendary weapons. And they have like certain requirements on certain maps. So maybe it was more obvious than when I was playing it as, like, a 15-year-old, 16-year-old. But yeah, to find out so many people wanted her, I was just like, wow, people actually care about Eden. Please show up.
and a fur. We got a couple Binding Blade characters there. Maybe it's a good sign. Two. <laughs> Lelina and fur. That's fine. Alright. Gonna pull all of these, because I'm still going for Sue. I've always wanted Wrath and Heroes, but I'll take Sue. I like her as well. I think the choices for this banner were pretty... I don't want to say good, because I, as I said earlier, I wanted Percival a lot. I wanted Milady. Maybe even like Lalum. But I think there was a pretty big demand for Sue and Lu and Idun. Let's see if we can get Sue or Lu. But yeah, uh, pay your respects to the Rutger fans out there. <laughs> All right, we got, dude, this, this banner is nuts. Wow, my luck. Plus attack Sue, wow. Very excited for that. Thank you, game. I'm really excited that they added a whoa Dao bow. So that, that's going to be really cool. But as I was saying, sorry to the Rutger fans out there. I know he's like a god in FE6, so a lot of people were looking forward to him being a god. I think it could still be pretty decent though, and at least you're guaranteed to get him pretty much. And you can, like, reliably plus 10 him, unlike me with my Valoria. I have to pay an arm and a leg to try and plus 10 her. Alright, so we're done with green. I'm just gonna go red for the rest of these orbs. But with Valoria, I actually paired her up with uh, my Ares and gave Ares the Quicken Pulse Seal, so they're, like, supported together. Really strong. He gets his AoE special at turn one, so it's amazing. Highly recommend that combo if you have the two of them. And you're running like an AoE special. What the hell? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Alright, this video is getting so many dislikes. I feel like whenever I do well on a banner, I get more dislikes than on the video. <laughs> we got a neutral Katarina. I actually have a decked out Katarina. At the end of the video, I show like my builds for what I pulled. So you'll see. Pretty happy about that. Let's let's back out. This is insane, dude. Oh, I forgot to mention. Uh, I made a community post a couple weeks. Maybe it was like two weeks ago at this point. That Shango and I are going to try a new video format out. So it involves us receiving... Ether Raid's defense wins from you guys. A bunch of you sent them into to the email address I listed on that community post, which I really appreciate. Thank you so much, guys. But I'm kind of hesitant to use this system further on because I feel like it's a, a little too invasive. Like, people were emailing me and I got their, like, full names in the email and I was just like, oh, this doesn't feel right. So I'm thinking if this series does turn out to work decently, and it becomes like a staple for the channel. I'm gonna ask people to upload their replays to YouTube and they can make them unlisted if they want. And then like I'll make a community post maybe and ask people to post their replays there. Let's go for the green. But yeah, I'm excited to try and record that. I don't know how many subs I'll have at the time of uploading this, but I'm very close to 4K, so thank you so much for that. I guess I'll make it the 4K special. I don't know if I'm going to do a giveaway again because, one, I heard Gleam links are getting deleted on YouTube. Like, they're getting strikes on channels. That's at least what I heard. And number two, last giveaway, I had a lot of issues with the uh, international gift card giving away when it came to Apple and, well, I guess even the Google Play cards, too. I don't know how Phoenix Master 1 does it with his international cards, but I had to uh, jump through some hoops. 
Some of, some of you guys figured it out. The winners from last video were like super cool about it. They're like, oh, I just changed my region in the store. But it was like super sketchy, dude. There was one one kid who couldn't figure it out. So I basically logged onto his account with an iPhone. <laughs> because I don't have an iPhone and he did. I logged onto his account and used my credit card to buy him orbs. That was like the only way I could give him the prize. Pulling back the curtain a bit. So yeah, I don't know if there's gonna be a giveaway on that video. I'd like to say thank you to, get to you guys. But it was more of a hassle than it needed to be. Alright. Tough call here. Left or top? Bottom left or top? I'm gonna say bottom left. And a long coup to end it off. That was an amazing summoning session. I didn't get E done, but that's fine. We got, what, five, five, five stars in that amount? That's crazy. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and thank you for all your support lately. It's much appreciated. I hope you're looking forward to that new Ether Raids video format that's coming out. I gotta get Shango here one time, and we'll uh, record it. Other than that, best of luck on your pulls. I hope you're still enjoying Fire Emblem Heroes, and if you're not, take a break. Not a big deal. Take care, guys, and until next time, Speedy Hawk out.